Hello architects and developers and welcome to another video on patterns of event driven architecture. I want to start this week on a subject that really got me thinking recently. I was recording an episode of the Ready Set Cloud podcast with the wonderful Alan Helton last week and one of the questions he posed to me was the difference between a stream, a queue and an event bus straightforward question I thought and then I tied myself up in knots with the actual answer and now I'm really really hoping Alan that you can use some magic of wonderful podcast editing to make me look like I actually know what I'm talking about. So I thought that seemed like a good thing to create a video on if I was struggling to explain it myself well then actually creating some video content on that will hopefully help some of you who might be struggling with that same question and that's what we're going to dive into in this video why you should care about the difference between a queue a bus and a stream and when is the right place to reach for each of them and to really start this conversation I want to start with a discussion on the two primary types of integration that you're going to see they are point to point integration and publish subscribe and understanding these two integration patterns will more easily help us talk about the difference between a queue, a stream, and a bus. So let's start with point-to-point -point integration. Point-to-point -point integration is typically used when you've got one service, let's call that service A, that needs to communicate directly with service B. It's a one-to-one -one integration. So there'll be some kind of message channel in the middle. Service A puts the message onto the channel. Service B takes the message from the channel. Point here, point here, and we're integrating from point to point. Publish subscribe, on the other hand, is typically used for more one-to-many type integrations. This is one of the fundamental differences between the two. Point to point, one to one, point publish subscribe, one to many. So you've still got service A publishing messages onto some kind of message channel. The difference being here that you will probably have multiple different consumers and all these consumers are interested in that same message. So this is really important to understand when you think about messaging is the difference between point to point and publish subscribe. And let's now take this conversation into the world of queues, buses and streams. And let's start with a queue. Queues are typically used for more point to point integration where you've got one producer and one consumer. So in the typical queue based system, let's look at that same example. You'll have service A at one side, service B at the other side. They want to communicate with each other. So you'll have some kind of queue in the middle. And service A will be pushing messages onto this queue. And service B is going to be reaching up and taking messages from the queue. And this allows you to really easily scale your consumer because you've got one service integrating with one service. You can have multiple instances of service B all reading from this same queue. And what will happen is that typically messages on the queue are only going to be consumed by exactly one consumer. So what that means is that that message will go to that instance of service B, that one to that instance, that one to that instance that one up to that instance, and then maybe that one to that instance, and so on and so forth. So it allows you to really easily scale your consumers. You can scale them up, and you can guarantee that each message is only going to be processed once. What you wouldn't want to do with a queue is to have multiple different services subscribe to the queue. So if I had service C subscribe to this exact same queue, and service C decides to pick up this message here, that message goes to service C, well, service B will never actually see that message because one service has received the message and then it's deleted it from the queue. The durability of a queue makes it really good for error handling as well. If service B, for whatever reason, goes offline, it's broken, everybody's unhappy, everybody's crying, people are screaming, there's alarms going off everywhere, well, these messages are just going to keep building up in the queue, waiting until they are processed. The key takeaway there is queues are really good for point-to-point -point integration, durably integrating two services together directly. Let's shift this conversation now to talk about buses. Buses primarily re relate to publish, subscribe, but you can fan a message out to many different consumers. So coming back to that same example again, you've got service A over here, service B over here, and then you've got some kind of event bus in the middle. And in much the same way, service A is going to publish messages onto the event bus. So all these messages build up on the bus and service B is going to reach out and grab the messages that they want. And the difference being is that service B is going to receive every single one of these messages. If service C and service D are also subscribed to the same bus, the same type of event on the bus, well, all of these events are going to go to all three services. And that's one of the big differences. Every single service that's subscribed to a given message is going to receive their own copy of the messages. Messages hit the bus and then fan out to multiple different subscribers. Event buses are great for event-driven architectures where events are published onto the event bus and then all the different parties, all the different subscribers 
can then subscribe to that certain type of event. It decouples your producer from your consumer. These two don't need to know each other exists. They only need to know the location of the bus. Typically, most event buses out there are ephemeral, meaning that the bus doesn't guarantee any kind of persistent storage, and messages typically won't sit in the bus waiting for a subscriber to receive them. Thinking about Amazon EventBridge in this example, if a message is on EventBridge and there are no subscribers at that moment in time, well, EventBridge is going to just drop the message. So you need to think about that. Event buses typically don't have durability, and that's one of the key differences between a queue and a bus. And that actually means that queues and buses play together really nicely. Let's think about a similar scenario where you have service A over here and service B over here. And service A is just publishing messages onto an event bus. So all the messages are hitting the event bus and then service B needs to subscribe to their messages. Now, when you think about a queue and its durability and how that makes it easier to scale your consumers and it, easier, it more easily allows you to deal with failure, actually inserting some kind of queue, and I'm going to use a slightly different shapes channel here just to indicate a queue difference from a bus. Let's put a queue in there so you can all remember what that is. So now instead of subscribing my bus directly to my compute to service B over here, I'm actually going to subscribe service B to a queue, a queue that it controls. If you think of this as the boundary of service B, and then it's going to be the queue itself that's actually subscribed to the bus. That way, when an event comes onto my event bus, Service A publishes that event, that event is going to go through to the queue and it's going to sit on that queue and it's going to sit there durably until the point in which Service B is ready to process it. And that means if Service B is offline, Service B is technically still going to receive messages because they're going to come into this durable queue and then Service B can pick them up and process them as and when they need to. This is also really good for protecting your services. If you imagine Service A suddenly starts publishing 100 times more messages, well, if Service B was subscribed directly to the bus, Service B is going to have to deal with that 100 times message load. Whereas if you've got this queue in the middle, that 100 times messages are just going to build up in the queue. Service B can then go through and process them. And you might even add some additional instances of Service B to process you through the backlog. And then we get to the stream. The stream was the one that confused me when I was chatting to Alan last week. And as I've been thinking about this more and more, I think streams kind of sit as a middle ground between a bus and a queue. A stream is a sequence of data elements that are made available over time, and they're often used for handling real-time data. Streams differ from queues in that they're designed to handle continuous flows of data, but they can also support multiple consumers, each of which can read the stream independently at their own pace. Streams can also retain data for a specific period of time, allowing for replayability or late joining consumers to process historical data. So a publisher is going to send a message onto the stream. If you imagine this set of records here are all the messages on your stream. And then as a new subscriber sets up, so subscriber B here is going to subscribe to the stream and it's going to actually start from the earliest point on the stream. And service B is then going to run through and grab all of these messages and bring itself right back up to date. And remember, these messages on the stream are long lived. They're going to be sat here for a little while. Amazon Kinesis, for example, has a 24 hour retention period by default, but can retain records up to 365 days. And services like Kafka can theoretically retain messages forever. So streams are like a queue in that they have an element of durability but they also allow for multiple consumers. Each consumer can subscribe to the stream and it's the consumer's responsibility to keep track of the last process location in the stream. So in this specific scenario, service B now knows that it's up to position 10 in the stream because it's read up to this point. If service C now comes along and service C is a brand new service that you've just spin up another team in your organization has created, well, service C can now say, actually, you know what? I'm going to start right back from position zero and I'm going to walk through, I'm going to grab all these events. And now I also know that I'm up to position 10 on the stream. So as you add new services, having this stream allows you to actually go back in time almost and hydrate a new service from all of the messages on the stream that have come before it. And this also gives you a really nice way to manage replayability. Let's say for some reason, service B decides that it needs to actually process some old messages. It realizes from message five onwards, for example, it didn't quite process the messages in the right way. Well, it can simply reset and think, okay, I'm up to, I want to start processing from location five, not location 10. And then service B can read from that point on the queue and get back up to date to position 10. 
So a stream gives you that really nice balance between queues and buses. You're allowed, you can have multiple consumers all processing the same messages, but there's also an element of durability. Now, a really, really important point here is that streams are not databases. Do not use your streaming technology as your persistence layer. Where you have a stream in your architecture is likely where you're integrating two microservices together. And if you think about one of the core principles of microservices, each service should own its own data. So service A is going to have its own database and service B is going to have its own database as well. So service A will manage their own data inside the boundaries of their service. And the stream is the point of integration. It's not the database of a given service. And that is super, super important to remember. To summarize though, you can use queues when you need to ensure that a message is processed exactly once by a single consumer. And be careful with that exactly once thing. Services like Amazon SQS do not guarantee exactly once delivery unless you're using first in first out. So although I say exactly once, some actual implementations may mean that you get the same message twice. And queues are particularly good for task distribution or decoupling where ordering and reliability of the messages are absolutely crucial. So if you're integrating two services together and you need to guarantee that you don't have data loss, a queue can be a really good way of doing that. Streams can be really good when you're dealing with large volumes of real-time data that needs to be consumed by multiple different services at their own pace and where you need the ability to replay events from a certain point in time. If you imagine IoT use cases, they're a perfect example of streams where IoT devices are just publishing a huge amounts of real-time data and different consumers can read from that individual stream. And then finally, reach for an event bus when you're building systems that require a high degree of decoupling, where you've got multiple services that need to react to the same set of events in different ways, or when you're broadcasting events to multiple subscribers. In all likelihood, you're going to have places in your architecture where you might need all three, and hopefully now you understand scenarios where you might want to reach for each. Thank you all for listening. That's it for streams, buses, and queues. I will see you all in the next video on patterns of event-driven architecture. I'll see you there.